Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Slater Group. This is part two of my review of the US edition of Xero. In this part, I'll be covering invoicing, billing, and payments. All this functionality can be found under the Accounts menu item. Let's start off with Sales. The Sales page is for creating and tracking unpaid invoices. If you're simply receiving income, I'll show you how to do so later on in this video. So, the Sales page brings you to a sort of Sales dashboard. I'll click on CL to get a list view of all the invoices. You can easily sort the data by using the column headers. And if you want to see more transactions, if you go down to the bottom, you can choose to see more rows. The search is OK, but as you can see, you're limited to searching the invoice number, reference, contact name, and dates. You can't search by dollar amounts or descriptions. That's too bad. Over here, there are tabs that can be used to filter the statuses of invoices. Draft, awaiting approval, awaiting payment, paid, and repeating. By the way, draft means you're working on the invoice, but in a pinch, it can also be used as an estimate, since they don't affect reports. Awaiting approval is also a draft, except it's being held until a user with the proper role approves the invoice, and when that happens, the status changes to awaiting payment. Let me now show you what creating an invoice looks like. The interface is quite basic. You use the to field to choose who you're invoicing. My gripe with this field is that you have to start typing in your customer's name. There's no drop down box. Ideally, you really should remember the names of your customers. But if you look at the item field, this has a drop down box which lets you choose an item or even add a new one. I don't see why the to field can't have a similar function in drop down box as well. It's also not entirely intuitive what happens when you do type in a customer name that doesn't exist. So you know, the answer is that it'll create a new customer. Something that can come in handy for certain businesses is that you can choose branding, which is Xero's way of saying invoice templates. Xero allows for multiple templates and also some advanced customization using Word docs. Besides being able to pick an invoice template on a per invoice basis, you can also set up a default template for specific contacts. Next up is this little attachment icon. You actually don't even need to click on the icon, you can simply drag and drop a file into the page. It's pretty slick. A nice option for those with global businesses is the chance to choose your invoice currency. Unlike QuickBooks Desktop, where you need to create a new customer for each currency that you use, Xero allows you to invoice a customer in any currency. I like how you can toggle between tax exclusive, tax inclusive, or no tax. This makes creating sales and entering bills a lot more flexible. In Xero, you can choose an item which will fill out the line item details, just like choosing a product or service in QuickBooks would. However, you don't need to choose an item, but can simply enter in a description. And once you enter the quantity and price, you can then choose the account to code the line item too. This region field is actually part of Xero's tracking categories. You're allowed to set up two tracking categories to be used for reporting purposes. So in this example, Choosing a region will attribute the sales to a specific geographical area. Tracking is only done on a line item basis though, meaning there's no way to choose a tracking category for an entire invoice. When it comes to saving invoices, you have two distinct buttons you can click. The blue save button actually gives the invoice a status of draft or awaiting approval, whereas the green button will give the invoice a status of awaiting payment, which means it will affect your reports. Once you approve an invoice, you can then email it using the email icon over here. There's a few things I like about emailing from within Xero. You can easily modify and add multiple email addresses to the email invoice to field. You can also choose from multiple email templates. This makes it easy to quickly customize invoices. Of course, you're still able to modify the subject and message. And you have the option to send a PDF or not. These are little things, but the sum of them means that for most situations, I can use Xero to send out invoices to customers. I found a lot of accounting software doesn't offer this type of flexibility around emailing, which necessitates that I use my regular email client to send out invoices. Once an invoice is sent, this is what it'll look like from the customer's perspective. The Pay Now button will bring the customer to the payment service you set up, which I'll cover in a moment. This questions or comments link can be useful, but its implementation is not quite fully fleshed out. Send in a message will send an email to your company and also add a note to the invoice. But if you want to respond to a customer's question, you can't reply to the email and you can't do it through Xero. This breaks the communications history. To see that history, all you need to do is go to the invoice 
and it's in the history and notes section. Here you can see if an invoice has been viewed, messages that have been sent to your company, but again, no way to send a message back. Something I also find lacking with the messaging is that Zero does have a messaging system, but when a customer sends you a message, it doesn't show up in here. If we go back to that online invoice and click on save, Zero will give the customer the option to save the bill as long as a free Zero account is created. Fair enough. Having that free account gives the customer the ability to see all invoices and credits, as well as to pay the entire balance. Very nice. Let's move on to payment services. This can be found under settings, then invoice settings, then payment services. What's great about Xero is that it offers a lot of choices. DPS, eWay, GoCardless, PayPal, Stripe, and a generic custom payment URL. You'd use the custom payment URL option if your payment service isn't officially supported, but the payment service happens to have an API that you can use to create payment links. Please note that while you can have multiple payment services, you can only use one service per invoice template. This means you can have one template for PayPal and one for Stripe and choose which one to send a customer, but you can't have a template that includes both payment options. With all payment services, except for PayPal and the custom URL, Zero will mark an invoice as paid when a customer pays via the online pay now button. However, payments are not auto reconciled. I should mention that Zero also has a direct integration with Square that does an auto reconciliation of payments, deposits, and fees. However, you can't add Square as a payment option to invoices as Square doesn't allow this type of functionality. But knowing what Zero has done with Square, I hope that they can add this type of auto reconciliation capability to other payment services. Let's go back to the sales page. There's a few more things I wanted to point out. Receiving payments can only be done one invoice at a time. So you can't choose a bunch of invoices and pay them all at once. You need to click on an invoice in order to receive a payment. One time saving feature found in the sales page is the ability to repeat invoices. There's not a ton of flexibility around timing of when the invoice is entered or sent though. Basically, once an invoice date is reached, it is entered into zero. You can use this to retroactively add a bunch of invoices as well, if you choose an invoice date before the present date. When it comes to invoices in the future, zero will add the invoices as the day arrives, as opposed to entering all future invoices immediately. This is good if you don't want future unentered invoices to affect your reports, but not so good if you're trying to do some cash flow forecasting and would like all your future invoices included in those reports. Another time-saving feature is contact groups. This means you can create one invoice and send it out to many contacts at once. This can be useful for a membership site that charges every member the same amount once a month. It would be really cool if you could set up a repeating invoice for a group, but unfortunately, repeating invoices can only be set up for individual contacts. Okay, so I covered entering unpaid invoices, but what about entering paid invoices or using QuickBooks terminology, sales receipts? This functionality can be found by going to accounts then bank accounts. If you then click on manage account, you would choose receive money. Pretty much this is a stripped down version of creating an unpaid invoice. What I don't like about this is that navigationally, it's a few steps removed from the sales page. Additionally, if I go back to the sales page, any receive money transactions as well as invoice payments are not listed in the transaction lists. This is too bad because in contrast, QuickBooks Online does a good job of grouping all sales transactions on its sales page and customer transactions on its customers page. The very last thing I'll mention about sales transactions in Xero is that it can issue credits, overpayments, and prepayments. I find Xero does a good job of handling these transactions, which actually all end up creating the same thing, which is a customer credit which can be applied to invoices. Okay, on to billing, or as Xero calls it, purchases. Most of the functionality is similar to sales so I'll only point out the major differences. One is that there's an ability to create purchase orders. There's no sales orders yet, by the way. As you can see, this uses Xero's new design language. More space, so touch friendly, as well as some delivery options at the bottom. I like the more modern look and hope that Xero will use this in other sales and purchases pages. If I go to see all the purchase transactions, there's a couple buttons here that defer from the sales page. For starters, you can make batch payments for bills. Nice, why can't I do this with sales invoices? 
Secondly, scheduled payments is not what you might think. This option simply adds a planned payment date to the bill. It doesn't actually schedule a bill to be paid on a future date. It's good for cash flow purposes as it groups planned payments together, but again, it doesn't add a payment on that date. I also want to clear up something else that may potentially cause confusion. If I click on accounts, you notice that there's an expense claim menu item. This is not for expenses paid using company bank accounts though, but rather expenses paid out of pocket by owners or employees. It's actually a nice built-in claim system, but just make sure not to make the mistake of adding expenses this way. If you want to add an expense, you need to go to accounts, bank accounts, then manage account, then spend money. I was originally going to only do two reviews, but I decided to spend a bit more time with Zero and do a third review. As you can see, this video is already over 10 minutes long. I was trying to get it shorter, but I think the devil is in the details, and while I don't cover absolutely everything with invoicing, billing, and payments, I hope you now have a better understanding of Zero's strengths and limitations in these areas. I should point out that despite some of my criticism, I think Zero generally does a good job in these areas. Could they do better? Absolutely. But they also do a lot of things very well. For example, the customization capabilities is the best among all the other online accounting software that I've seen. And as I always say with my reviews, it's better to judge software on what you need it to do versus choosing solely on the amount of things it can do. In part three, I'll talk about the import and export of data, add-ons, reports, some other important features like file attachments, and finally give my overall opinion of zero. This is Greg Lamb for the Slitter Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.